Tears of the Kingdom. It's a game where you switch around weapons, switch up runes, fast travel around, eat food and much more. But what if we didn't do that? What if we didn't pause the game to access these features? Could we still beat the game? Let's find out. If you're curious of my definition of a pause, it's pressing plus, pressing minus, pressing left, up or right on the d-pad to change equipment, and switching runes. These two runes that kind of pause the game are fair game, and menus and cutscenes don't count. I can also still reload auto saves by exiting out to the home menu, then booting up my game again and reloading the save. With that out of the way, like and subscribe if you enjoy, and let's start the run. So after watching a few cutscenes, we eventually cut away through the starting ruins, and I ignore this chest because it contains armor that we can't currently equip. We now drop down and pick up a stronger weapon, and then steadily progress until we've reached the Temple of Time. Here we get told to head to the shrine over there, but doing that shrine now would actually softlock us later on. So instead, I take the path towards the left towards the snow area. You may think we're going to die, we can't pause so we can't heal up, and eventually we'll die to the cold, right? Yeah, this does happen, but when we reload we have full HP, and fortunately there's a fire right here and we can set our sword on fire, giving us just enough heat to steadily progress. And for this part where we climb up the mountains, I have to throw the stick to keep it on fire. But I end up dropping the sword into an inaccessible area. Fortunately, as long as we're quick, we can survive long enough to reach the next fire. And from there, I defeat a construct with a bow and pick up another wooden sword. The sword allows me to safely reach this area where we need to climb up, but my HP is a little too low to reach the top and I die. Fortunately, when I continue, Link is at full HP so we can easily make it up and we reach the Ascend Shrine. There is nothing that interesting about this shrine and with that shrine down, we steadily move down the mountain. I have just enough HP to retreat into this cave, and from here we've escaped from the cold area. Now I just have to run over here, drop into the water, and go through this cave. This allows us to reach the fuse shrine. The only interesting part about this is I have to use the fire on this to light my arrow to drop down the chest. The rest of the shrine is easy, and we now drop into this cave, smash through the wall, and progress until we reach the Ultra Hand shrine, which if I did now I would get soft locked later on. So I had to take another loop around the map just so I could attach a bomb to my shield. Now we can safely take on the Ultra Hand shrine, and with some basic constructing, we beat the shrine. And now we must run all the way to this part right here where we pick up three fans with Ultra Hand. Then I had to run all the way back to the Temple of Time. The most noteworthy thing about this journey is I have to carefully use this tree to move the fans up the mountain and from there I can easily reach the top. Around here I have to pick up one of these floating platforms and now I've just got to reach the Temple of Time as intended. Here we gain Rewind but lose Ultra Hand. We then climb up to this door and get told to fast travel to the Sky Island that we were on at the start of the game. But obviously we can't do that. So how do we get over there? Before we got Rewind, I had constructed this flying machine with Ultra Hand, and now I had to ride it to the island. Some noteworthy things about these flying platforms is they have a maximum distance they can go from their starting position before they just disappear, and the one I picked up could just barely reach the starting island. You may be concerned about how we move to such a precise location, but if you hit one of these platforms it slightly alters the angle that it moves, and with this we can steer the platform where we want. With this technique, I managed to reach the starting island and I slowly climbed up it and reached the Rewind Shrine. The shrine is pretty simple and I now run back to the Temple of Time. I now open the door and finally the use of my bomb shield is revealed as I jump up here. Now I just shield jump to get over here and I initiated the cutscene to escape the Sky Islands. Alright, now we've got a few things to do before we fight Ganondorf. First, we need to get the Master Sword for a strong weapon to fight him. In order to get that, we need to complete 12 shrines and one temple to upgrade our stamina. Our other objective is to beat the Fire Temple as Unobo would be useful against some of the bosses before Ganondorf. To start, I go to Pura and pick up the Paraglider. Then I got to work and did some shrines. The first was this one that the footage got corrupted for. It's called combat training and it's really easy. The next shrine just required a rewind, a well-timed arrow and another few rewinds. Rise and Fall is a shrine that required a few rewinds at the start, but at this point I had to find a creative solution by throwing down a weapon and using rewind to activate the switch to send Link into the air. From there we had beat another shrine. Now I journey towards the volcano as I wanted to get the fire temple done fast. On my way I find this shrine against the flow and it actually required a somewhat interesting solution. The first part was done the normal way but here they want you to make a boat. We can't use ultra hands so we can't do it the intended way. The flow was also pushing down so I couldn't just walk across with a fire hydrant so I used rewind along with a hydrant to slowly make my way to the other side. It took some time but that's another shrine down. Now I entered the Goron village, watched a few cutscenes and then I followed where the game wants me to go. I then buy the armor that I can't equip, but with the assistance of a certain NPC, I can. This NPC is located in Hatano Village, so I ran all the way over there. He's just in this building, and now we try to change the color of our armor, but instead we change our clothes. 
and with this we can equip the Flame Guard armor, allowing us to carry on the Goron questline as normal. So I go beat up Unobo and gain him as an ally. And that's pretty good, as he can deal damage without using durability. Next I head into a shrine, it's a proving grounds. For this one I just had to be careful about the amount of durability I use, but eventually I got it done. And now I climbed up the mountain. Around the top there's a shrine, and this one is pretty easy. I've just got to take a ride on a few vehicles. Now I finally reach the top, and we get a cutscene, and now we have to defeat a mini boss. I get a little scared here as I can't get on one of the wings, but it turns out there's a bunch of them around, and I found one I could actually get on. Now I just shot down the boss, and head into the depths. I talked to the Unobo and now we have to head to the fire temple. To get there, I steadily climb up this part and when I reach the top, I just had to run to reach the fire temple. I begin this place by going over here and I cross this with the help of a fire hydrant. I then catch a ride on a minecart and reach the area near the first padlock. I used a hydrant to beat this like like and that reminds me. Like and subscribe, please. Anyway, with a good angle, I shoot this rock and undo the first lock. Now I did some climbing to navigate around the temple, and eventually I find myself here, and I go over this wall. From here, I had to do some gliding and climbing to reach the area with the next padlock, and I hit it to unlock it. With some careful climbing, I've reached the third floor, and from there, I climbed up until I reached the fourth floor. With a little extra climbing, I've reached a room with the third padlock. I wasn't exactly sure if I could make the shot from here, and without Ultra Hand to move the ramp, I thought I was in some trouble. I found that you never could move this platform, but that didn't really help. Fortunately, I found this part where you can land the shot. With the third padlock unlocked, we move up here, and I land a shot with Unobo to break this big rock. I go in the newly uncovered room and uncover the next padlock. The final one was on the fourth floor, and I did some climbing and reached the main room on the third floor. From here, I had to do some shield surfing, climbing, and gliding to reach the next area near the next padlock. Here, I can't do the intended method of shooting Unobo up to the top of the room, so I just had to rely on some careful climbing to unlock the final lock, and I could finally fight Goma. Fortunately, durability isn't an issue for this fight, as I picked up quite a decent weapon from one of the chests, and with Rewind and Unobo, I can easily tear through Goma's HP. On Goma's second phase, I end up killing myself with a Rewind, but on my next try, I just stun lock them, and overall, the fight isn't that noteworthy. Now, I just have to pick up the heart container, skip a few cutscenes, and obtain the Vow of Unobo, allowing us to use them everywhere, which is pretty nice. Next, I wanted to prepare for the final battle, so I went into this cave, and I abused the Talus to get through here. I picked up some attack boosting armor. On my way to the next attack boosting piece, of gear. I do a few shrines, most weren't really worth the effort, but Built for Rails was one I could actually beat. With some shield surfing I could get past the first few parts, but here they want you to use Ultra Hand, and things get a little more complicated. I was still just shield surfing, but I had to hop on and off my shield, and eventually I got enough speed to reach the end. My next shrine was a Proving Grounds, this one's pretty easy. For fire and water, I run through the water, and to reach the end, I use the spring of my shield that I obtained from the previous shrine to make it to the end. Now I arrive at my destination nation and figure out that obtaining the armor piece from the cave would probably be impossible so uh i go do more shrines that i don't think are possible on a windy device i have to throw the fans until they are in the right position and then i fly up i glide across the water and here i keep using rewind until i get the fan on this platform then i ride up to it with the other fan I now just ride up to the top to beat the shrine. Next I journey to this floating island, and on this island there's a shrine, but there is also fairies. Fairies are the only way I can restore my hearts, so they were pretty useful for this run. For combat training archery, I have to shoot a few shots in bullet time, that's it. Since it was on my way, I took a quick detour to Hyrule Castle to pick up the Hylian shield. So now I've reached the ability to obtain two stamina bars, and now it's time to hunt for the Master Sword. If you don't know, the Light Dragon flies really high up if you haven't done any of the side quests related to the Master Sword, and because of this I had trouble reaching them. So I got distracted, and I ran into this cave to pick up the Fierce Deity Mask to boost attack. Climbing out of the cave was kind of hard. I had to constantly take breaks to regain stamina, but eventually after about 10 minutes, I had escaped and I moved on to getting the next piece of equipment. It was just in this cave near Hatano Village. I used Hunobo to melt the ice, and I obtained the gear. Now I actually searched for the Master Sword. I caught sight of the dragon and tried to follow them, but when they got near a tower, they were far too high for me to reach them. So I had to think of a solution. The solution was me heading to the highest tower in the game and climbing onto the nearby Sky Islands. From there, I just had to be patient. And eventually the dragon appeared in the distance, and I glided onto them. I then drew the Master Sword, and I was almost ready for the final boss fight. But first, I went to the Goron village to obtain a certain weapon, the Boulder Breaker. To obtain it, you have to give this NPC some materials. The hottest to obtain is some diamonds, but you can just buy them from this NPC. I then tried to buff the weapon, but that doesn't work with this weapon for some reason. So after adjusting my help and picking up the Royal Bow, I was finally ready to fight Ganon. 
I swiftly made my way through the cave and the reason why I picked up my weapon is revealed as I smash through these rocks. I then reached the final drop and it was time to fight the Demon King's army. But uh, I just realized, how do I beat... Yeah, I don't think I can beat this boss in my current state, but fortunately I thought of a solution. It was auto build, so I entered the depths and picked it up. Here you may be wondering how I escaped the depths, but the observant of you may notice my armor. In case you can't tell, I'm going to ride this dragon out of the depths. This plan was successful and I ran back to fight Ganon. Holgera was an easy fight, you just have to skydive into them for damage. And with a bow, I can quickly deal with their second phase that is a little more dangerous. Mokdorok's first phase was quite manageable with the sprinkler schematic, as when they use this charge attack, they can easily be damaged. But on phase two, they lose this attack and they become much harder to kill, and I die. I tried doing the boss gauntlet a few times, but some of the bosses were really tedious. Like for Queen Gibdo, I had to run around in circles until she dropped down. I decided this wasn't fun, so I tried my backup plan. Thanks to this plan, I could go all out against the Demon King's army. I used powerful charge attacks to easily deal with the Bokoblins, and with their numbers diminished, they were easy to deal with. The next wave was a slightly easier version of the previous wave. The thing to note is that durability is not an issue in this as I can pick up weapons that the enemies drop. Unoba made the Gibdo wave easy and the Moblins are big, slow and stupid. So yeah, they're easy. And I've run up to this wall and performed the glitch. To perform it, you need an auto build with a steering stick. I was using one from a schematic. Then you need to place it through the wall and press B and Y very quickly. Next, press A and hope it clipped into the wall. For me, this took a few tries, but I got it and I hopped on the stick and clipped through the wall. I then cancelled the glitch and it was time to fight Ganondorf. Here is the reason I picked up the Master Sword as Link will always pull it out to fight Ganon. Phase 1 is easy, I just land a few flurry rushes and some shots in bullet time, nothing too bad. Phase 2 was similar to Phase 1, the only difference is I have to play a little more defensively as I don't want to get hit by the clones. I land the final blow and we were on to Phase 3. For this phase I've got to pay a little closer attention as he moves quite fast now. I've got to carefully time my dodges, but I end up getting dropped my final heart. And I also lose my shield, but I manage to pull through and I end the fight. Demon Dragon was very easy, it's a cutscene boss. I just hit his weak points and land the final blow to end the run. My conclusion of this run is the Great Sky Island was fun, but when we left, the lack of fast travel really made this run feel tedious. If you enjoyed, I would appreciate if you liked and subscribed, and bye.